The first update I want to offer to you today has to do with an anniversary. To be precise, the 10th anniversary of the collapse of one of the oldest banks in the United States, Lehman Brothers uh, Bank. It collapsed in September of the year 2008, and it was the kind of celebrated beginning of the crash of global capitalism that really got going in those last three months of 2008 and into 2009 and 10. It may come as a shock to you, but that was 10 years ago. We are now September 2018, and so there's a fitting opportunity to reflect on the 10 years since that crash of economics, of a capitalist system. The second worst crash in capitalism's history, exceeded only by the Great Depression that began in 1929 and did not end until 1941. Well, what is a retrospective? What is a sense of the last 10 years? I'm going to take you very quickly through the highlights because it's an important date and an important 10 years. The first thing that happened after Lehman Brothers Bank collapsed and basically took the whole capitalist system with it was that the banks, the biggest ones in this country, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, all of them, did this remarkable thing I want to remind you of. Having given speeches all the time, their leaders, who had in their speechifying explained how the government doesn't know what it's doing and that the best the government can do is let the bankers do their own thing and private capitalism is its own engine of growth, all that kind of talk, all these leaders of all these big banks discovered by early October of 2008 that they were bankrupt and couldn't function. So they all got in their limousines or their airplanes and went to Washington begging the government that they had made fun of to save them. And the first thing that that government did was to bail them out. That's what the rest of 2008, 9, and 10 were all about, saving the banks. And they did that by providing them with enormous amounts of money and credit, which they could not have gotten any other way. So we had the no most enormous bailout of our financial system, bankrupt by its own actions that we've ever seen. When the government was finished spending wild amounts of money to bail out the banks, it turned around and told the rest of us that now that they had spent all this money on bailing out capitalism, uh, they couldn't spend money on us. And so they imposed on us something called austerity. Well, in Europe, they called it austerity. They tend to call things by what they are. Here we called it prudent fiscal policy, but it amounted to the same thing. The government went then to work to rebuild the big corporations, bailing them out, General Motors, American International Group, things like that. And there was a recovery for rich people. It's been going on the last 10 years. The result, since there was austerity for the mass of people and a recovery and bailouts for the rich, that inequality in this country, itself a cause of the crash, became worse over the last 10 years than it was in the years preceding the crash. It's like the banks. In the heat of the crash, we said, my God, they're too big to fail. We have to bail them out. They're too big to fail. Something should be done about it. Well, nothing was. So today, those same banks are bigger than they were then when it was thought that they were too big. And so where are we? Where does the retrospective, the 10 years, leave us? Well, J.P. Morgan, the largest bank in the United States, just this last week released a report predicting that the next financial crash will happen in the year 2020, less than a year and a half from right now. What a comment. Very little learned, nothing changed. The unstable capitalist system that crashed in 2008 is threatening us 
with doing it again. If you don't learn from history, you will be condemned to repeat it.